Cameron, Sam, Bloom, thank you for joining me today for a cup of tea. And Sam, you've Thanks been known to say yeah. that a cup of tea, a cup fixes, of tea everything. fixes everything. It truly does. <laughs> and it's a big part of the reason that I wanted to start this show, Tea with Jules, because I feel like it brings people together, have a cup of tea, things unfold, yep. you have a good chat, you let all your feelings out, then you get on with it yeah, for the day. Totally. Well, thank you for coming again today. I really appreciate it. And I've, you know, I've read a little bit about your story and your beautiful book that we can talk more about and the future of you guys as well. Let's start with how you met and how your whole story unfolded from there. Well, uh, Cam and I met when we were 19. Um, my mum and dad owned a cake shop at Newport and oh, I used great. to work there just to get some money while I was at uni and Cam used to come in and I thought he was pretty spunky. <laughs> <laughs> and so we used Looks to like talk. Looks like Bradley Cooper. Looks like Bradley Cooper, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> and so we used to just chat, and and, um, and then I remember one night um, I went to the local pub, to the Newport Arms, and I saw Cam there, and I asked him out. Go, girl! Yeah, and went from there. Got married, had a family, you've got three yeah. beautiful boys. And so let's talk about your accident, and, yeah. and you were in Thailand? Thailand, yeah. Yeah, I mean, because Cam and I have always loved travelling. We've been to Africa, I don't know, five times or something. And one trip we did was to Ethiopia, and we mm. fell in love with Ethiopia. And so our plan was, once the boys were older, to take them to Ethiopia via Egypt. And um, unfortunately, there was like a lot of unrest in Cairo at the time. So we thought we'd take them to Thailand because it's safe, easy, lovely people, mm. lovely food. Three or four days into our holiday, we were staying at this like beautiful hotel, like just opposite the beach. It was pretty remote. And, um, no tourists around. Yeah. So it was kind of what we wanted. Yeah. yeah. And one of the boys saw a stairway, like a stairway going up to a flat rooftop and we went up. I don't remember, but I leant on the railing and the railing broke and I fell, broke my back and hit my head and did a fair bit of damage. Yeah, Sam was so, pretty lucky to survive. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. Cam ran down with the boys and just found me lying, lying there bleeding and I wasn't breathing terribly well. She had massive pool of blood coming out of her head and... And then when I looked at her back, I saw, saw this huge lump in her back and I just realised that she'd probably broken her back. My goodness. Yeah. And all three boys were there mm. as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's the worst bit. Yeah, so they saw the whole thing unfold. Yeah. And you don't remember? You don't remember? No. My last memory of that morning is swimming. Wow. Yeah, and thinking like how great it was. I mean... What do you do in that moment? It's in panic. a foreign land, yeah, it's, you, you, it's, you, you don't know really where you are. You, Your wife has just hurt yeah. herself terribly. You've got three kids to mm. take care of what happens. I kind of battled with looking after the kids and obviously Sam as well. But, you know, the priority was to get her to a hospital. And luckily there was um, a good one about two and a half, three hours away. Mm -hmm. So we had this terrible ride in an ambulance where the they were traveling at like 160 kilometers an hour. The kids are in the front. <laughs> Sam's kind of like barely alive in the back with me. They didn't even have their sirens going. There are times when we would sit in traffic and we would just not go anywhere. And eventually, you know, just this language barrier of yeah. me saying, come on, where's your siren? Eventually they put her on and you know, off we go again. It was really difficult. She was operated on about four days later because she was not stable enough to be operated on. They put rods and screws and it was about a six hour operation. Then you woke up? Uh, yeah, I was pretty out of it. You had really bad I had headaches. the most insane headaches because I had all bleeding on my brain, like subdural, extradural hematomas. Yeah. And so um, my main focus was on my headaches. I do remember I saying, sorry, I wrecked, my, I wrecked the holiday. Mm. I remember saying that and then bursting into Sam tears. never complained. My gosh. Oh, I was... <laughs> well, you swore at the nurses a little bit. <laughs> that was the first hospital. Yeah. But I don't remember that. She was out. And she I was, was out. so mortified I did that. I can't yeah. believe it. So yeah. when did you, I, I guess, get the prognosis or the diagnosis? I was flying back to Sydney. So I was in Thailand for about three weeks after the accident. Mm -hmm. And um, the Thai doctor, he was so lovely. And he never said, you'll never walk again. He kept saying, oh, it's spinal shock, it's spinal shock. It'll settle down mm -hmm. in maybe like, what, six to eight weeks mm -hmm. or something. Was swell there was a lot of swelling, was swelling. Mm -hmm. back. and then when I um, was flown back to Australia I went to Rono mm -hmm. and then my second day there I went for MRI and that's when the doctor came up or well, he said he looked at my scans and you know it didn't look good and that's I asked will I ever walk again he just bluntly said no you'll never walk again so I just pulled the sheet over my head and burst into tears and never saw him again 
He just yeah. walked away. He and walked away. Delivered the news. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So I was devastated. Of course. Yeah. I can't imagine that feeling from going. I'm on a holiday with my mm, family. I know. I'm a mum of three kids. Yep. Active. Active. Super, because I love sport. Yep. Like surfing and, and mountain biking, played soccer. Yeah. Yeah. Like exercise sport was the one thing I loved and yeah. It's pretty overwhelming. Yeah, that's a lot. <laughs> so I wasn't happy to say the least. So, so you felt quite depressed, very sad. So, so sad. I was a sad, I, I was don't think angry. You were depressed. You were just... I was just... I was gutted, yeah, really. I was yeah. devastated. Depression didn't come to much later. No. You know, I wish I'd died. I said that to Cam a few times. I wish I'd died. And yeah. Yeah. Once you came Tricky. out of the hospital, you come home yeah. to your... I guess it's it's your new life. It's yeah. like the new normal. You've got to get used to, yeah. to saying goodbye to what you once had and then discovering <laughs> a, a whole new way of living. Yeah. How did you? How did you? Not good. <laughs> Not good. Yeah. Next, I loved my life. Yeah. Yeah, I loved everything about it, and yeah, to completely contend with who I was, and yeah, to have that all ta- ripped away. Yeah. No, not good. And yeah. kids and I, I were, we were really looking forward to Sam yeah. coming home. Yeah. But she'd been gone for six months. Wow. She'd been in the hospital that long. Oh, right, yeah. So it was like, unreal, Sam's coming home, yeah. you know, this weekend or, or whatever it was. And we just knew that it was much harder for Sam than we thought it would be. Yeah. Thought she'd be happy to be home. And your emotions and your sort of roller coaster of having to deal with that is one thing and then yeah. your family's is is a whole another thing so Cameron how did you navigate this because that's that's a huge change for your entire life as well yeah I mean at times um it was overwhelming but I kind of saw it as a challenge it's, it sounds a bit cold but um my focus was on to try and get Sam happy again yeah look after the kids as best you know we could and still work let's talk about beautiful penguin the magpie tell me how she came into your life and how she made things a little bit more brighter for you well it was about three months after i got home from rehab from hospital Mm -hmm. it was noah and i our little son and i went over to my mom's for lunch she had to drive us home so we went into the car park to get into mom's car and noah saw a little baby magpie on the ground Mm -hmm. and she'd been blown out of her nest so we couldn't have left her there because she would have died she could like hardly walk she couldn't fly and so yeah i picked her up and we took her home Wow. She, yeah, it was so unreal. So she, was, she was so cute. And so um, I liked it because she took all the focus off me mm-hmm. and we all, like, all focused our energy on Penguin. So cute. The, the photos are incredible. Cameron, you're, you're a photographer, so you've taken all of these amazing photos <laughs> of this bird in the mm. most amazing positions and <laughs> on top of the kid's head yeah. and in the garden and in the house and just kind of living its life, you know? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd always photograph the kids. Like, there's just... I think it's something we all do yep. um, mm-hmm. as parents, but as a photographer, I did it a bit more. Yeah. And so when mm-hmm. Penguin came along, it was kind of it's like, yeah, I r- this is a really pretty cool photographing, you know, this wild bird living with us. Yeah. And especially with the kids because they had such a great bond with mm-hmm. her. It was kind of therapeutic for me as well. Yeah. I really, I mean, I love taking photos and I still do, but having Penguin as the subject, you know, with the kids and with Sam, it was... It was really good. Yeah. So you, you gave her an Instagram page. Yeah. And then well, the kids, what happened? Yeah, the kids said, hey, you know, they, we should make an pe- Instagram account for Penguin. And so, yeah, we did. And we just, I just kept it. It was just for it. fun. Yeah. 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 And then people caught on. And kind of. It did, I mean, gradually, you know, got to like 10,000 or something. Mm. And then and then I think the ABC journalist rang. He wanted to do a story on this bird. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of went a bit crazy. It ran on the front page of the ABC mm-hmm. on News Online and then it went all around the world. What do you think your boys, their, their lives changed as well? Totally changed. What do you think they learned from the accident and then what do you think they learned from having this beautiful bird? Well, I asked Noah the other day, or yesterday I think it was, I said, yeah, well, what what have you learned? And he said that, yeah, how, how fragile life is. Yeah, yeah. yeah wow. That, that's pretty cool. And they learned a lot from Penguin. As right. well, like the fragileness of yeah. fragility of of Mother Nature. Yeah. Because penguin used to always get attacked from other magpies and stuff, and so oh. she would kind of come home battered and bleeding, and, yeah, and, bleeding and, and you know they would care for her. And mm. so there's a lot um, they learn how we all need love and nurturing, mm. and you know Sam <laughs> more than most of us yeah. at that you know during this time. Yeah. What would be one 
pearl of wisdom you would <laughs> offer to someone going through s- something that's really hard? Well, it took me what a year, <laughs> but to ask to ask for help, and it's okay to ask for help. Yeah, that's, that's taken so me a long, long time to mm-hmm. sort of get my head around that. Mm-hmm. It's made a massive difference. Yeah. And I know it sounds strange, but often the people who do help you, they get a lot out of it as well. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. It's true. So Penguin, yeah, Penguin has, has flown the coop. She's yeah. she's left the family, gone on to greener pastures, so to speak. <laughs> what was that day like when you, you knew that she was gone? Well, I wasn't there. I was over in Italy at the time because mm-hmm. I got onto in the um, Australian paracanoe um, team. Oh, well, yeah, so, which was us. pretty cool. That's amazing. Yeah, and so um, I went to Italy to compete. Cam came over with the boys three weeks after mm-hmm. to see me, and Penguin left the night before you um, left Italy. Left Italy. Wow. So, so it was just weird. Yep. She came like at the perfect time, left at the perfect yeah. time. At that stage, she was sort of starting to come and go a lot. Mm-hmm. So she would, you know, she would disappear for weeks on end mm-hmm. and then come back. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we didn't know if she was going to come back or not. And it was Reuben's birthday on the 15th of February. So, yeah, I said, as a joke, oh, imagine if Penguin came back. And, oh. And she did. <laughs> she did. <laughs> she, so what, be, she just won. We, I, got, I got a call from a neighbour over, over the hill. Yeah. And so she goes, oh, I think we've got Penguin. And so I raced over in my car and, and sure enough, Penguin was sitting in their lounge room. I, I put her, you know, on my shoulder and we came back in the car and drove over the hill and Sam came home with all the kids. I took a video of when Ruben spotted Penguin through the kitchen window <laughs> and he was beside himself, jumping up and down. And, oh, and best birthday ever. Hey, well, no, that's exactly yeah. what he said. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's amazing. So it was, it was cool. really cool. And we got a great video of it. But now she's, she's left the but family. But now she's but gone, yeah. I feel like she's left... A lot, a, an imprint. Yeah. A little bird print on your hearts. <laughs> yeah. Now, the future of you guys is looking fairly exciting <laughs> because your storybook life is going to be made into a movie. Like a proper mm-hmm. Reese Witherspoon produced Naomi Watts playing you <laughs> movie. Legit. Yeah. How did this happen? Tell me everything. Well, um, Naomi lives, um, I think at the time, she, I think she was living in LA and um, we got a book to our mutual friend and she read it, loved it, and then said that she would love to play Sam in the movie and wrote to us and I think she sent, we made a book trailer, she sent the, um, the book trailer to Reese Witherspoon and she was crying and she said, I want to be involved and so that's kind of, it happened about a year and a half ago now. It's just been slowly, slowly gathering a bit of pace and we're yeah. close to getting a director. Is that the weirdest feeling in the yeah, world? Yeah, it is very weird. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait till they start filming. So. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I wonder how interesting. They'll, who will play Penguin? Like, do they get a real bird? Do they yeah. make a bird? Uh, bit of everything, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think so. There's a, a blind one in South Australia that might be coming over. Oh, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> so she'll, she'll quite comfortably sit on... Naomi's shoulder. I, I yeah. can't wait to I can't wait to watch it. Yeah. I hope Naomi loves birds. <laughs> she better learn to. Yeah, I know. Yeah. She's gonna be up close and personal. Yeah, <laughs> she sure is. You guys are awesome. Um, thanks for joining me for tea today. Thanks for the cup of tea. No problem. <laughs> See, did we fix a few things? I think tea so. fixes yeah. everything. <laughs> no, the book is amazing. You two are just chill humans, just really normal, great family. <laughs> and and even though you probably don't think you are or don't no, want I don't to be, think I am, you no, are yeah. an inspiration. You really are yeah. just for showing up and for for just living Thanks. your life the best you can. It's amazing to see. Yeah. So congrats on everything. Thank you. And well done. <laughs>